Please welcome Kathy Podwell. trying to make over your mother would you all agree <laughs> yeah ah. <laughs> and i wonder too whether or not you all get typecast as being more beautiful than smart all the time do you does that bother you no Kathy? i don't i don't i well, really haven't felt that i don't i don't think that i've gotten that sort of treatment where really? you don't have a brain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no i i haven't oh really i think it that. happens it happens i think with not just women in our industry but in every industry uh -huh. um it is unfair to say, but I, I think that does happen to us. It does, doesn't oh, yeah. it, Debbie? Are oh, people yeah. surprised when well, you speak complete America, sentences? First yeah. of all, they assume this America is blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. So I, I knock that right out of the water yeah. right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do say, oh, you know, well, what, do you, what, what would you like to be a, a model when you grow up? And, and no, but they just assume that my aspiration is to just be Miss America, and, and that's all. And, and a lot of people are, are surprised to find out that uh, this time next year I'll be Dr. America. I'll be finishing veterinary school. <laughs> though, Christian, that works in your favor, because if people think that you're just another pretty face, that when you come on smart and you show that you have some, some brains, that it's always people are... Then stuck. they're intimidated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they're intimidated because they really don't expect... If, if I'm having a, a problem with a storyline or something, and I go to the producers and I say, I really don't feel this is working, they look at me like, what is she talking about? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes... I know this feeling. Oh, you do, do you? <laughs> So they're, su they're surprised if I step forward and I say something. Otherwise, if I'm not saying anything, they think, oh, well, she's happy. She doesn't know what's going on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk beauty for a moment. I know you all have other things you want to talk about, but when did you first know that you were one of the pretty girls? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're totally conceited if you answer that question. Oh, no. <laughs> but I think some girls, I was not one of them, um, grow up and they look in the mirror and they say, well, you know, I'm pretty cute. And other girls know, like me, you better be smart. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, but I understand you have the beauty is from within. Yeah, I it's understand not just that. Surface. Okay, I understand yeah. it, Christian. I know about that pretty within stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah, Oprah. You, yeah, easy for Ray. You want to say easy for her to say, right? They can say that because they're beautiful. Yeah. But you don't oh, see us inside, in the morning. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's all inside and all well, that. Growing but, up in in my home, anyway, there was always emphasis on being who we are on the inside and getting right. our identity based on uh, what was on the inside, not what was on the outside. If my mother said it once, she said it a thousand times. Beauty is as beauty does. You know, you know beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I can remember growing up and someone would say, oh, Miss Turner, your, your daughter sure is pretty. And she'd say, oh, yeah, I've seen better or something. To make us <laughs> she was like, give me my compliment. But she wanted to instill uh, in my sister and I the, the importance of knowing who we are on the inside and not depending on what we look like because I may or may not be attractive to uh, someone on the, you know, on the street, and certainly uh -huh. what I look like now is not what I'm going to look like 10 years from now. What so, about the guy you had a crush on in the, was it sixth grade? I, oh, yes. I, <laughs> I told the story to Oprah. I had, there was, uh, he was a brother of my best friend, and I, it was my very first crush, and I just, I loved, his name was Eric. I loved Eric, and I would have done anything for him to like me, or almost anything, and he... <laughs> that a sixth grader would do. And, but he told me one day I had a very um, crowded mouth. And they pulled eight teeth to get my teeth straight for it. So there was a lot of teeth in there. And I was a weird looking kid, a big forehead, and I wore two braids, and I had big ears for the size of my body, and I had these huge buck teeth. And my sister, she swears up and down that at that time when I lay down at night, my, those teeth would stick straight. <laughs> Sorry, so she can't. But anyway, he told me uh, one day, he goes, you know, you'd be halfway cute if you'd get some braces and do something about your teeth. And that devastated me. And uh, so I didn't like him anymore. Aren't you grateful to him today, though? <laughs> well, you, you know, I, I, I just saw him a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't say anything, but I thought, like, well, how do you like me now? <laughs> say uh, going back to that I don't feel like I, I've received any sort of discrimination or downplay because of how I look and I think that also comes from how I feel about myself I see 
the flaws that I have. And so it's like I can't even perceive somebody thinking I'm so beautiful because I, I see my flaws. And what, did your mother, what did your mother tell you, teach you about your looks? About Not beauty. much, really. really. She didn't. She, she never, she couldn't care. She could care less about really? if I wore makeup, when I wore makeup. Or how much yeah, you wore? Or how much I wore. Yeah. I really was, was, oh. was pretty good, pretty responsible with, with makeup. And did beauty. your mom first teach you how to put on lipstick? No. no. <laughs> My mom, I remember it was a battle because I wanted to wear it earlier than she wanted me to. And it, it, there was a certain Doesn't time. every girl? Yeah. yeah. Well, we all get into our mother's makeup. <laughs> yeah. Right off the bat. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would yeah. look in magazines and, you know, get in the mirror and copy what the, the cover girls did. And then I'd come out of the bathroom my mom would say, you're not going out of the house like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we're doing today is we're going to turn the tables. When we return, you'll see the before and after results of our mother makeovers by our panel of celebrity voters. Back in a moment. You all know that I have one sister, but in just a moment, you'll find out I have another. Bad news, pizza and pepperoni. Prepare to get picked on even more. Why is everybody always picking on me? Why? Because now you can get a pepperoni lover's pizza at a very pickable price. Get one for just $8.99 and have to four more for just $4 each. With two prolific pilings of pepperoni packed between two extra heaping portions of cheese and a particularly low price, who can resist picking? Why is everybody always picking on me? You know why. has some opinion on your appearance well today we are turning the tables on some mothers and invited their daughters to supervise a complete makeover on their moms hair clothes makeup everything I even made over my mother we will begin first with Christian who came into Andre Walker's hair salon with some very specific things in mind for her mother <laughs> take a look take some of the hair off of here just to lighten it up because she has such beautiful cheekbones I mean she has such a beautiful and also, it'll show her long neck. Right. We just take some of the hair off of here. And maybe um, splice some pieces here, just so it frames the cheekbone on one side, but a little shorter on the right side than the left, and keeping the swoop here. So almost it looks like it's just tousled, but not done. Okay. Like a lot of work hasn't gone into it. Sure. It's something a little versatile that if she goes out at night, not that you don't know you look great. <laughs> but I figured, heck, since I have you here. <laughs> Okay, now here's how Christian's mom looked before. And now we're going to bring out the new uh, Joanne Alfonso. Joanne, there's you. Yes! Terrific! Terrific! That's good. That's good. She knows her... Oh, she has her mark. <laughs> Hi, oh, Mom. that's great. Oh, you look great. Oh, that's wow. great. Now, I understand, Joanne, you picked out this outfit all on your own to manage to do it under $500? My, my, actually, my dad helped me. Oh, really? Sorry, Mom. And your dad's hiding somewhere. My right? dad's hiding in the green room. He gets too nervous. Okay. He's okay. more nervous than she is. Is this, is this unlike something you would wear, or? A lot of times, I'll send her clothes for Christmas, birthday, whatever, and because I'm living on the West Coast and she's on the East Coast, I'll send everything. And she thinks I'm completely out of my mind until she gets it on and I yeah, tell her on the phone how to put everything together. And then she likes it. Really? But otherwise she hates it until I get home. Always fits. You Perfectly. look terrific though. Do you like the way you look? Yeah. Really terrific. Just terrific. Are you pleased with the whole silhouette here? I'm getting used to it. Because <laughs> <laughs> is it kind of hard to look in the mirror and see? You love your hair color, though, don't you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If I had told her yesterday morning that her hair was going to be auburn, she would have said, that's it, I'm getting on a plane and flying really? back. I understand. And it's up to you. 